Now the next area that we need to focus on is area B, decoding and fluency. And in this area, the first place that we're going to start is with letter sound correspondence, which remember I've set that arbitrarily at first grade. Now when I go over that in greater detail, you'll really understand why these two foundations of upper and lowercase letter naming and segmenting are so critical because both of those foundational skills are important for this essential skill of letter sound correspondence which begins decoding and fluency and a child who lacks uh, one or the other or both is going to have a quite a difficult time with letter sound correspondence and letter sound correspondence is the gateway to the rest of the items in this area of area B. Now some other grade levels that we can throw in here as I continue with my overview is um, onset rhyme instruction and we're going to also put that at first grade. These are just benchmarks as I have indicated so if you have been teaching these uh, early el elementary grades and see some of the stuff being taught earlier or later that's okay because really this model should be three-dimensional. There's a whole um, a set of skills that are going to be taught within onsets and rhymes that might extend all the way to second grade, for example, or start much earlier, earlier like in kindergarten. But let's just say that we would be worried that if a child wasn't grasping onsets and rhymes in first grade, that that would be cause for concern. After onsets and rhymes, then we move to phonics generalizations. These are the phonics rules. Let's set the, those at second grade if we could. After phonics generalizations, we move to simple polysyllabic words, and we can set that at the beginning of uh, third grade. And then finally, exiting a child in third grade means that they are fluent. Now, fluency can certainly occur at any point within area B. A ch child can be fluent with letter sound correspondence with onsets and rhymes, phonics generalizations, and simple polysyllabic words. But as an exit criteria for third grade, fluency is going to mean something a little bit different. Not so different that you won't be able to grasp it, but it is a much broader definition. And I'll go over that definition with you when we get to it. Well, let's continue just with our overview and sort of absorbing this material and begin to focus our attention on the components. So let me increase the screen size just a little bit and have you write some examples on here and then we'll go through the notes together. Okay, so letter sound correspondence. This is really working on the alphabetic principle. Let me try to write that in here, if I may. And I'm going to abbreviate it as alphabetic P for alphabetic principle. And that simply means that one letter stands for one sound. You will see in a moment when we go uh, into greater detail with the notes why the alphabetic principle is so so important. So we start with this letter sound correspondence where we are going to unite segmenting and letter identification together and then move into onsets and rhymes where we will beginning, be, be giving a child for example an onset, a consonant sound for example and pairing that with a word family like a rhyme having the child learn how to sound out cat. We will then begin to introduce consonant combinations or clusters. For example, we'll introduce uh, a blend pattern. For example, the BLN, our friend blend. So we have our little uh, blend pattern in the beginning bottle and we're going to pair that with a word family. And, and then we will introduce even more complex letter combinations called digraphs like the sh and shock. And the progression then has to begin with letter sound correspondence and then move to onsets and rhymes in this order because if you don't have a child who can do letter sound correspondence, ka, ad, ba, l, and, and sh, ak will never make sense. Okay, well, after onsets and rhymes, we move into phonics generalizations, for example, where we're going to take a short vowel pattern like uh, mad and teach the child to add a silent e to it to make the word made for example. Or why you double consonants and why you don't double consonants in a word like hopping, H-O-P-P-I-N-G, and in a case of hoping, H-O-P-I-N-G. And so some of these uh, rules are conscious rules. They're rules that someone sat in a chair and devised as part of telling a reader how to pronounce a word. For example, the silent E rule is an arbitrary. Somebody sat down and worked this rule out. The same is true for doubling consonants. Someone sat in a chair and worked out the rule for when to double, when not to double, because 
it really English is a code. Written written English is a code, and the code is trying to tell a reader how to pronounce things so that once they pronounce them correctly, it will register meaning. Okay, well, after phonics generalizations, we begin to work on simple polysyllabic words. For example, we'll look at the word uh, elevator. For example, L E V tor and learn something about open and closed syllables that you know that there are one two three four syllables in this word but all of these syllables are, are of a different variety some are open and some are closed and that's important for you to know because if you're going to have a child who's fluent by third grade, it means that they'll be able to get through any simple polysyllabic word that they see, any word with a phonics generalization in it, um, any onset rhyme combination, and certainly starting with this letter sound correspondence business, because in order to exit a child um, in third grade, we have to ensure that they're able to read with good speed. I'll write that in here, speed, that they read with good accuracy. And finally, that they read with good expression or intonation. So all of these critical parts, then, of speed, accuracy, and intonation will depend upon their ability to get through all of the items within this area of Area B. So now that we're done with the overview, let's uh, start to take a look at the notes and look at each area in greater detail and talk about some activities. Okay, we'll do that when I come back. Thanks.